Hello, my name is Susan Carroll. I am Assistant Professor of Math at Georgia Highlands College. Today we're going to talk about Section 2.5, Solving Quadratic Equations, using the square root principle at first. Now the square root principle says that if x squared equals some number k, then x equals plus or minus the square root of that k. So for example, if I have x squared equal 100, then x is going to be plus or minus the square root of 100, which of course plus the square root of 100 is 10, so we get x equal plus or minus 10. Now the plus or minus is just a short way of writing two answers at once. So we have x equal negative 10 and x equal positive 10. Now if your um, square term is not isolated, so for example we have 3x squared minus 36 equals 0, the square root principle requires that the square term be by itself. So we're going to have to, for this problem, we're going to move our 36 over, so we're going to add it to both sides, and then we're going to divide through by the 3, and we get x squared equal 12. Now we can apply the square root principle, so we get x is plus or minus the square root of 12, which is a simplifiable radical, so we're going to have to do that. Um, 12 has a square root factor of 4, so we're going to rewrite that as plus or minus the square root of 4 times 3, and then that's going to become plus or minus the square root of 4 times square root of 3, so we finally get x equals square root of 4 is 2, so plus or minus 2 square root of 3. Now, let's look at an example where your square term is an algebraic expression instead of a variable. So if we had 2 times x plus 5 squared plus 50 equals 0. Well, um, we still have to isolate our squared term, so we're going to subtract 50 from both sides. So 2x plus 5 squared equals negative 50. We're going to divide through by 2, so we get x plus 5 all squared equal negative 25. And now we can apply the square root principle, and we'll get x plus 5 equals plus or minus the square root of negative 25. Now we're allowed to use complex numbers in this section, so we will continue. x plus 5 is equal to plus or minus, the square root of negative 25 is 5i, and so we finally get x equals, subtract the 5 from both sides, negative 5 plus or minus 5i. Now don't forget, that means x equal negative 5 minus 5i, and x equal negative 5 plus 5i. Please note, those are complex conjugates. That happens quite a bit. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is completing the square, and we're going to be completing the square on your generic quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals some zero. Okay, now let's look at two cases. Our first case is going to be where our leading coefficient is a nice positive 1. So x squared minus 6x plus 4 equals 0. If you have a leading coefficient of nice positive 1, then you can jump straight into completing the square by moving your constant over to the right side. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. And then I'm going to take 1 half times the coefficient of x over here in my little scratch work area of my page, and I get negative 3, and then you take that number and square it, including the negative, so it becomes positive 9. 
We are going to add the 9 to both sides of the equation. As long as you do it to both sides, you haven't really changed your equation. And now the left side of this equation is a perfect square trinomial, which means it is extremely factorable. You get x minus 3 all squared, and over here, of course, you get 5. And you use the square root principle. x minus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 5. And add 3 to both sides, and you get x equals 3 plus or minus the square root of 5. Now, let's look at an example where our coefficient is not a nice positive 1. So 4x squared plus 8x plus 3 equals 0. Now, I suggest you just go ahead and divide through by the coefficient of x squared. So we're going to divide everything by 4, and I do mean everything on both sides of the equation. And you're going to get x squared plus 2x plus 3 fourths equals 0. And now you proceed as you did in the previous example. You're going to move the 3 fourths over. And that will become negative 3 fourths because we subtracted it. And then you're going to take, I'll do it down here this time, 1 half the coefficient of x. So 1 half times 2 is 1. And 1 squared is 1. And then we're going to add that to both sides of the equation. And over here on the left side, we factor that as x plus 1 all squared. And over here, negative 3 fourths plus 1 is positive 1 fourth. Use the square root principle. Um, x plus 1 is, whoops, equal to, I almost forgot, the square root. Well, I'm going to scribble that out. Square root of 1 fourth. That's supposed to be a plus and minus. It just kind of got a little bit confused there. And so we're going to have x plus 1 equals plus or minus. The square root of 1 fourth is 1 half. So x plus 1 equals negative 1 half. And x plus 1 equals positive 1 half. So we're going to subtract 1 from both sides. So this would become negative 3 halves. And this would become positive, oops, negative, excuse me, negative 1 half. OK. Now, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. I'm going to kind of write it at a diagonal here. My email address is scarroll at highlands. Dot edu. Hope I can get that in. And you have a good day.